This video discusses how to be an instant agent on the TrackDrive platform. So I've logged in as an agent here and I just want to show you uh, that if you are an agent and you have all these menu options, uh, chances are you're on the wrong uh, instance. Uh, you're on your own instance of TrackDrive. So this would typically show your name up here. A little bit confusing on mine because I have a name similar to the company, but I do need to switch to the companies I'm working for. And it could be that you have many, many companies you're working for. So you might, in my example here, that's the company I'm working for. But if I was really working for 10 companies, I might have a bunch of companies I'm working for listed here, and I just have to pick the right one. Now, I can either pick it through change, or you also have over here switch company. And this one's a little better, so you can see this is a computer because this is track drive demo agent two, and that's a would normally be you. You can see this is your company, and that's not the one you're trying to work in. Then you'll see your other companies you're working with, and you'll say, ah, that is the company I'm trying to work with. So now I've switched companies, and now I'm sitting here uh, ready to be an agent. Now, connecting your soft phone is quite easy. You don't actually have a soft phone. We now do have this track drive soft phone, so it's going to open that uh, up. Typically, if you click auto, you want to auto connect, so you don't ever have to use a soft phone after you open it. It will remember that uh, setting for you forever. Um, but this can go anywhere. I can actually put it on another screen, which I'm doing in my demo here. So you can see the soft phone, but on track drive, you don't need to do anything other than answer with your soft phone. So when I do click call me now, uh, I would answer with the soft phone, but if I have it an auto connect, it'll just connect. I don't actually have to answer. So I could minimize this, but I'm just going to move it off the screen here for a second. Um, so I do have to say I'm on duty beforehand. And if you don't, I, if I click call me now, it's going to tell you I can't you're not in the active status. So it is telling me to change my status up here. So I'll say active. You might have many different types of statuses. Like I have some people active uh, where there's no music playing and then there's never active with music. So you can figure out what you're trying to do to become active, but each company can configure their own uh, statuses. As well as just know if you're working for a company and they don't have a status you want or a disposition you think you need for the campaigns you're working on, feel free to reach out to them because they can maintain uh, their own. So you, I do have a become active without music here. Um, so I had an active and become active without music. So I could do it either way on when I'm on hold. Okay. So I'm going to set myself to active here and tractor is going to call me automatically um, in time. I can also click call me now. Now see it did call me automatically here. So I'm going to show you just click and call me now. It's going to say we already did. So I had it on auto answer. So it just answered by itself. So now the caller is going to pop up automatically right in, in, my, uh, in my conference. And then the way you end a call is you're just going to go ahead and click, you know, interview the client and do what you need to do. So a lot of times you're just going to see, oh, yeah, I got uh, this person. Uh, that call was, um, I don't want to do one that's going to kill my demo leads, but I'll just say there. It's not really dead air, but I'll say, oh, voicemail detected. That's a great example because what happens here is you, don't, you see it doesn't have a leave voicemail button. And that is because we've configured the system to leave for the agent to leave voicemails, let's say, on calls two and six. So we know when calls two and six are happening, and this button would be a leave voicemail button as opposed to the voicemail detected button. So as an agent, you wouldn't have to figure out, I need to press the button on certain calls. We just know that the, we've configured the system to leave them on certain calls, and it'll give you the right button there. So as you're interviewing the client, you do what you need to do. And then as I get through the whole thing here, it's going to tell me the buyers that are matching. So as I change my uh, configuration here, interviewing the consumer through things here, like maybe changing this, say that he's still in school. Well, you'll see that when it saves that record, the buyers change. So this guy kind of interviewed himself out of matching any of my current buyers. So I'm going to go back to saying that he's out more than six months and you'll see it rematches with the buyer after that. And I'm able to transfer that call. So let's say I did get through this whole interview. As you go to transfer the call, all you have to do is press find a buyer. Now this transfer button typically won't be there for most agents because they don't want you manually transferring. They've configured who the buyer is going to be and it's automatically going to figure that out. So you just click find a buyer. It'll call a buyer. I think I am the buyer on that. We'll see. Yeah, I am. So the phone's ringing. I got the buyer. I could have muted the caller or held the caller. The mute the caller means they can't, you can't hear them. So if you're interviewing the client and it's got a quiet atmosphere out there, you would probably during the transfer hold the caller, which would still let you hear them, 
as you're doing this transfer and I'd have words down here on the how to hand it off and whatnot so this script here said ask for the agent name so that during the unmute I can transfer and have who's on there um, so some things are missing here because uh, I don't have the the um, agent name here and it would show up down there so if Bobby answered the phone Bobby answers and spell that right but you'll see this switches here because now I did get Bobby right um, so I did get the buyer on the line and all that stuff and now after I've done my discussion with him with the client on hold on hold I can still hear the client so that if he's yelling at me hey I need to talk to you it's fine but do remember that hold caller you can still hear a mute caller you can't hear them and that's you know if they had noisy TV or children in the background or something so you can choose what to do there um, but that's it and you know, once you do the find a buyer and you know the, I'm talking now introduce the buyer to the client I would just say that was a successful transfer that's going to leave the consumer the lead and the buyer on a conference and I'm going to go and be ready for the next caller so you're moving on the same thing is that when you're leaving voicemails um, when you press leave a voicemail button our voicemail bot will go off and leave that voicemail but you'll be getting the next caller for leave a voicemail it is not intelligent enough to figure out uh, that when the beep is so you do have to wait for the beep then press leave a voicemail but besides that you'll get the hang of all these buttons very quickly if you're interested what these are this just tells you what each action will do like this one would just go to the next lead and mark it voicemail detected however disqualified it would automatically dial the next lead we want you to put in notes here on why they're disqualified and it also kill the lead from running anymore so we give you these little hints on what these buttons will do and you know like they add to DNC we'll opt them out block them do all kinds of stuff um, so that's how the system works again these statuses up here are configurable the dispositions are configurable so make sure that if if you're not seeing something you think would be good for you as an agent to use reach out to the owner of the track drive account and ask them if they can add some things for you and if you have any more questions reach out to support at trackdrive.net